Hello friends, welcome back to In My Car with me, Sean Starr, In The Car With Starr. I love the name, I really do, and I came up with it. Uh, happy to be with you uh, everybody on this game day is the uh, Montreal K. I got activity like all over the place. I don't know if you could see out my, out my rear view there. I got trucks, I got tractors, I got people working on the left side of me over here, people working on a staircase next to, uh, next to where I'm parked. I mean, it's uh, kind of distracting, I'm gonna do my best to uh, see if I can see these notes, see all these notes. These are my notes that I work off of all day, right? Uh, game day. Montreal Canadiens on a heater, everybody. Uh, one game winning streak as they welcome in the traveling New York Islanders. Yeah, the Islanders come in having not played a home game yet this year, and they won't for like another five or six games before they finally get back uh, to, the, to their uh, new barn as the Canadiens welcome in the Islanders on a one game heater. I believe this a big time. I'm a huge fan of uh, short term goals. I love hitting short term goals. Why? Because they're easier to manage and you get a stronger sense of fulfillment when you hit them, right? So whether it's you're on a, like a weight loss journey or you're on a financial journey, something where you've set an objective and a timeline that you wanna hit that objective in. And I think athletes across the world of sports operate with a similar mindset, especially ones that play in a marathon of a regular season. So Major League Baseball, 162 games. The NHL and the NBA have almost mirror schedules, uh, 82 game regular seasons. Does it make sense to you to look at an 82 game marathon and say, okay, put your head down in game one and don't surface till game 82? doesn't work that way. You have to break it down in manageable chunks. And I think teams operate under that type of strategy. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Canadians looked at their schedule and took it in 10 game sample size. Okay, we've got eight 10 game chunks to work with. Chunk number one was an absolute failure. No debate, no, no room for debate. Canadians went two and eight, full value for their 10 game sample size, right? So I don't think it was a coincidence that in the second installment of a 10 game breakdown, game number one, which was game number 11 of the regular season, was the best game the Montreal Canadiens played. From my perspective, and Dominic Ducharme said as much, Nick Suzuki said that was one of his better games, and that was more like it for the Canadiens. They showed their identity, they showed who they were against Detroit on Tuesday night. That version we saw be successful in the playoffs. It was a feel good day, I thought. Carey Price, the news of Carey Price kind of emerged that he was on his way back. So he's coming back. Uh, Jonathan Drouin looks okay after he took that puck from Brett Kulak to the head. He went to the hospital, came back later that night. Josh Anderson saw him at the rink, said, man, he looks pretty good. Dominic Ducharme said, this is a day by day situation that Drouin wasn't concussed. So there's more good news. Nick Suzuki scored. He was also 68% in the faceoffs against Detroit. He has eight points in 11 games, had a three point night on Tuesday. And then Brendan Gallagher scored. Josh Anderson had six shots. Christian Dvorak was all over the place. He was 63% in the face-off circle, right? So there were a lot of feel-good moments from the Canadiens' 3-0 win over Detroit. And of course, obviously, there's the Jake Allen shutout, 22 saves, and the Canadiens blank Detroit there. So it was a gutsy win. It was an emotional win, something this organization so desperately needed, considering they were one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. Now, is this enough to make you believe that they've turned the corner, right? So the Canadiens managed to take their first two meetings against Detroit, they both scored them 9-1. to one. How have they done in terms of following that up? What does this team look like? And we don't have a massive sample size to work with. They've beaten one team twice, and they have a win over San Jose. So when they beat Detroit 6-1, to one, they follow that up, losing at Seattle 5-1. to one. When they shut down San Jose 4 nothing, their next game out, they got curb stomped by the LA Kings in a 5-2 final. So we're going to see if my theory is correct. We'll see it tonight when they welcome in the New York Islanders how this team performs. And look, they could play the way they did on Tuesday against Detroit, against the Islanders tonight. And by that, I mean effort, everybody's guts, everybody is playing hard for 60 minutes from the opening faceoff right to the end of the hockey game. And they could lose a game. And I'll come back here in my car and tell you how impressed I was. Because that's what you're looking for now. You're looking for something to build on. And I think the Canadians have started something to build on. Now, it's clear Jack Eichel is not a part of the plans for the Montreal Canadiens as the news broke this morning that Jack Eichel has been traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. And Emily Kaplan of ESPN had kind of set the groundwork the day before when she broke the news that, to her knowledge and her sources, 
only two teams and two teams only were involved in a potential deal for Jack Eichel from the Buffalo Sabres. That was Calgary, where names like Matt Kachuk and Sean Monaghan were floated around, and the Vegas Golden Knights, names like Shea Theodore was floated, floated around. So now we know the deal is done. Buffalo threw in Jack Eichel and a third-round pick in exchange for Alex Tuck and Yurik Kleb, and they're getting a couple of more picks. I personally think at this point, Buffalo kind of got fleeced. And there is this notion that I, I saw already this morning that Mark Bergevin should have been involved. He should have threw his hat into the ring. Well, a couple of things on that. One, we don't know. We don't know how aggressive he was in pursuit of Jack Eichel of the Buffalo Sabres or what Kevin Adams was looking at if he did want to trade this guy uh, inside his division, inside his conference. So a couple of things on that quickly. I honestly believe that you don't trade a player like Jack Eichel inside your division, inside your conference. I mean, we know going into trades, you never want to be wrong, clearly. I mean, you're making a trade, you're altering your franchise and changing its complexion. You can't afford to be wrong. But don't you agree that if you trade a player like Jack Eichel to the Montreal Canadiens, man, oh man, the pressure gets magnified like 10x. You can't be wrong times 10. Like, think about it this way. What if, for example, in a hypothetical world, the Canadians decide to trade Patrick Watt to the Toronto Maple Leafs instead of the Colorado Avalanche? How would you feel about that? That Patrick Watt went to the Leafs and they got the same results. That they won two Stanley Cups and the Canadians got what they got in, in, in Kovalenko and Ruzinski and Jocelyn Thibault. They got Felix Potvin, right? Like, it absolutely changes your legacy. Not only did they trade Patrick Watt to Colorado and he went on to cement his Hall of Fame career with two more titles, but I bet you as a Hab fan, you're glad he did it with Colorado and not with Toronto. You can't afford for that to happen if you're the Buffalo Sabres. You can't afford to trade Jack Eichel to the Canadians for what would be what? What would you have given up? Like, uh, full, all cars on the table? I was in the business. You want Matthias Norlander? Okay, I would throw him in, in a package for something. Cole Caulfield? Yeah, I would too. And my first round pick. If, they, if it was my call to make, and Buffalo said, I'd take Norlander, and I would take Caulfield, and I'd take your first round pick, I'm in. I'm making the deal. I'm making the deal right here, right now. Jack Eichel instantly becomes your best player. Jack Eichel instantly becomes your superstar. Jack Eichel instantly becomes uh, the, the one thing you've never been able to put hands on. And that's a legitimate, bona fide, number one center. But now he's gone to Vegas, and boy, oh boy, those Vegas Golden Knights, holy cow, man. They look incredible. Just incredible. And we'll see what happens with Vegas, because Jack Eichel's not going to be ready for like four months, minimum. So I don't know if they're going to do a Tampa Bay Lightning and a Nikita Kucherov in four months from now, five months from now. They'll say, listen, Eichel, with the salary cap, we're up against it. You're going to sit on the sidelines. You're going to be on IR. And when the playoffs start, we're going to pull you off uh, IR, a la Kucherov, a la Tampa Bay Lightning. And the rest, as they say, is, is history. Hope to see you at Poutineville Vaudroy Dorian on November 20th. Joey Elias and friends will be rocking the house. $20 gets you into the building. You can buy your tickets online at Poutineville Vaudroy Dorian. And today is Thursday. That means that Poutineville Vaudroy Dorian is open today. So you're looking for lunch. You're looking for something to do for dinner tonight. Great deals. And uh, don't forget to try the Sean Star Poutine chorizo gravy, scallions, mmm, the best potatoes in the potato game at my friends at Poutineville Vaudroy Dorio and uh, 16 bucks and the proceeds go to a great cause. Go check out the details at Poutineville Vaudroy Dorio and don't forget, I'll see you on Sunday at the Star Lounge at Little Havana and as I make my way there, as always, I get my snacks for NFL Sunday and I get my gas. You see how expensive gas is? Stop paying those big corporations all your money. Stop giving them all your money. Stop paying unnecessary taxes when you can go to Ganawage over the Mercier Bridge, Highway 138. It's K-Stop Gas Bar. You're saving money. You're supporting local and keeping money in your pocket at the same time. Okay? Win-win, baby. I got you. You got me. It's In the Car with Star. Brought to you, as always, by Ash Gregoire, Shaman, and Nissan. Game day on this In the Car with Star edition. Habs and Islanders, you're watching it on TSN. You're listening to it on TSN 690. And I'll see you tomorrow.